and welcome to the third episode of Season 7 of Great Kids Up Close. I'm Sean Ye. And I'm the nature from the City School Student Media Team. Thanks for joining us. We're excited to share with you the latest from City Schools. From helping in the community to being inspired by our students, on Great Kids Up Close, you will see real students of what's happening across Baltimore City Public Schools. In this action-packed episode, we will start with school visits to the Stadium School and Tish Tillman Elementary Middle School. Then we will stop by a military and college fair before we head out onto the water with kids and kayaks. But that's not all. We also have a couple, more than a game segments, where we take a look at boys soccer and girls volleyball. Then the show wraps up with a visit to the Great Kids Farm. So let's check out a story you did, Shawnye, at the Stadium School. Hi, my name is Sean Gay, reporting from the Stadium School. Although the population is small, they are doing big things. My first stop is Dr. Dangerfield's science class. Now in class, what are you doing? Electrostatic forces. We try and get the can to move back and forth with hair friction. Do you like doing hands-on experiments? Yes, it's fun. But it's more important for me that they, I want them to have fun, but I want them to definitely make the connection with the science while they're having fun. I'm here with Principal Hall. Can you tell me about the stadium school? Well, the stadium school is a small school located here in Northeast Baltimore, right down the hill from your school, Baltimore City College. We have about 240 students, come from all over East Baltimore, a few from West Baltimore. We are a very fun, small, structured, engaging little community here. See how respiratory system works. I'm here with Mia and I just caught her in classroom doing sit-ups. I just was wondering what you guys were doing. Well, just recently we started learning about the respiratory system. So today we were talking about um, breathing, like the air we breathe and everything and how the respiratory system works. I, I enjoy the um, good academic academics at the school because the teachers teach very good. My last step is the peer group connection program. Let's see what they're up to. I think PGC is an excellent group. We're leaders and that's what we are supposed to be. Um, we're role models for the school, we're the eighth graders. Right now they're in the beginning phases where they're working with Miss Little and Miss Bailey to go through the training process, the things that you saw them doing today, they're gonna actually do those with groups of sixth graders. So what we're gonna do in this game is everyone is gonna tell us the history of your name. If you were named after someone, you're gonna let us know who you were named after, how you feel about your name. Can you tell me about what your name means? My name means beloved and I enjoy my name. I think my name really represents who I am. Um, my name came from my father. I am a junior. Displaying positive behaviors, they can be role models for the sixth graders and the seventh graders. And we're kind of excited. The kids were, were very excited to be a part of it. I had an amazing time at the stadium school, walking class classes and always seeing them busy. This has been Sean Gay Moore reporting for the City School Student Media Team. See you guys later. Wow, look how much fun they're having in science class. Yeah, you can tell the kids are having fun while learning. Can you believe it? Take a look at those smiles. So now let's take a look at Tinch Tillman Elementary Middle School, where kids are falling in love with their school each and every day. Take it away, Marklet. Hey everyone, it's Marklet, and I'm here to share with you a special visit to Tinch Tillman Elementary Middle School in the heart of East Baltimore. At this school, students are falling in love with reading, writing, math, and so much more. Let's check it out. Follow, different, important, between. From the youngest learners to the oldest, the commitment to literacy came across in every single classroom we visited. Um, right now we're having a big shift, a big initiative for literacy in Baltimore City, and so it helps getting the teachers practice with it, we get safe practice, um, I'm like a buffer between um, formal observations, and so we all this practice gets them expertise in our field. Students worked on sounding out letters, reading passages from books, and analyzing text. Can pop, pee, 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 pee. Q, you, queen, Q, you, queen, Tomorrow we are going to be writing about Tuck Everlasting, about how she's feeling in these parts of the stories after she has got kidnapped. For all we know, wandering around just like us. Maybe, but we don't know them. Jesse pointed. Give. Hand. Give her a clap. Are we ready for the next one? Yes! Are you sure? Who can do that one? 
just in Mr. Brown's class in general, just the classroom management is so strong because kids are so happy to be in there. Sweating the small details lets students know that he really cares about every step that they take. A key component to our schools involve parent volunteers. Hello. Hello. Hey, Ms. Allen. Oh, That's for first graders. Hiya. And I love the kids. The kids love me back. Um, most of the kids call me grandmas. And then we come here. This is where we do all of our little magic. This is our board to say what everyone has assigned, and the magic starts. They balance it out. They know that some of the children may have, you know, issues at home or whatever, but when they come in here, it's more of a family environment. You know, they gather them together, and they have support um, every day, throughout the day. We always do stuff like in math, reading, and writing, and phonics. That's all the stuff we do until the end of the day. In a math classroom, we saw students working on scientific notations and comparing those numbers to certain images. In class today, we're learning scientific notations, which is basically making a number easier to write because long, well, long numbers can be really hard to write. And so scientific notation is taking 12 million and turning it into 1.10 times the blank power. Kids are celebrated for when they come to school every day. They have monthly celebrations. We acknowledge them every day for student of the day, student of the month. Um, we really try to build a well-balanced support system for our kids. Engage students in every grade Coming to school every day, wide options for after school programs, and a staff committed to the school and community. Wanting our kids to have the best opportunities and knowing that in the schoolhouse we're the first place where they sometimes get to see what else is out there. With a school so focused on achievement, supporting one another, and bringing people together, it leaves no doubt that Tinch Tillman Elementary Middle is a school we're all proud of. Thanks for watching. This has been Mark with Doty for the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. Aw, look how involved those kids are. They seem so focused and interactive with one another and are ready for their future. Stay tuned for more. We'll be right back after this break. These are our future, engineers and electricians, software designers and doctors, construction workers and child care providers. They will build apps and houses, create menus and video games, work with cutting edge technology and kids. They'll be found in classrooms and courtrooms, construction sites and computer labs. They are Baltimore City Public School students. They are career and technology education. Modernizing school buildings for Baltimore City students has begun, like right here at Arundel Elementary School. Amazing new spaces to learn in. Yes, through this program, schools and communities are being brought together in a brand new way. And I'm so proud to be part of this effort. That's right. Instruction jobs are open and internships are available. Discover more about the program at www.baltimore21stcenturyschools.org. Building a brighter future together. I'm a first generation college student, so there wasn't much help from like my, from home with the process. Like they encouraged me, but they didn't really know how to go about the process. So I worked here at North Avenue last year as student congress president, and I received a mentor, Dr. Jessup, who works here, and she helped me with the college process. Her and her husband. If I didn't have her, then it would have been way harder than what it was. School cafeterias have been making some changes. Whole grains, whole milk, fresh fruits and vegetables, some of them delivered from the district's own farm, and it's all free. Every city school student can now eat breakfast and lunch free every day. It's been good so far. Because it's like they gave me a choice, and I like having a choice. Now that's something to snack on. Welcome back to Great Kids Up Close, Season 7, Episode 3. Now let's go out to Xavier, who is at the Military Career Fair at Frederick Douglass High School. Where students get opportunities to learn more about different branches of the military and the ROTC program. Plus, 
Students get the chance to decide if they want to join the military or not. Here at Frederick Douglass High School, the military college and career fair is underway. Students are engaging with colleges and several branches of the military to learn about different career and education opportunities. Let's take a deeper look at what's going on. I'm here with Colonel G at the Military and College Fair, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about what's happening here. So, Mr. Colonel G, what, what's, what's really happening around here? What we have here at this fair is all the colleges that have an ROTC program. We also have business partners that are associated with uh, Baltimore City Public Schools. These scholars are going to be able to look into the military opportunities for a career. They're also going to be able to look at different businesses and what's required to get a career in that particular business, what kind of education they need, what kind of training they're going to need. Also, they're going to look at the benefits of junior ROTC in high school and ROTC in college and the scholarships available for them if they get involved in those programs. I want to major in law in college. I plan on going to University of Florida, actually. And if that's not the case, I always has a plan B. Um, that plan B is to join the Army, anything in a law enforcement nature. It's a lot of team building. I've learned to work with a lot of people of different ages, and they just give me overall uses of life even if I don't go into the military when I get older. Fourth element, fall out. So we're trying to just help these kids out and try to figure out a path in life, whether it be careers or education. Um, we just want to assist them in getting a uh, career path. It's like teaching us like how to be like a man, you know, how to depend on yourself. I hope to go to college, have it paid for fully, and like come out and get a good job in the military. Well, that's the thing. We listen. Uh, we do the whole thing. Listen with a purpose. We try to find out who they are and what they want to do. As students think about the next step in their life, the Military College and Career Fair presents new opportunities, keys to open new doors. This is Xavier Plater reporting for the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. I didn't know the military had so much to offer. Neither did I, Sean Ye. Now let's hit the water with Kids of Kayaks and Mount Royal Elementary Middle School. This program helps students see a different side of Baltimore, and I was there to find out. This is the nature reporter from Middle Branch Park, where students from Mount Royal Elementary Middle School are participating in Kids of Kayaks, a program that I did in middle school that gets kids out in the water and even learn a little bit about their environment. That your straps are actually going on top of the actual life vest. All right, you can read it, right? Not like this. Not like this. Not backwards, right? Right now I'm on a pier, and in the far off distance there are kids on a kayaking journey. It's important to come out here because, you know, people, they want to stay inside, don't want to do anything, and when they think about kayaks, they're going to think they're going to fall down, so it's like, you know, you need to like go outside more, go in the kayaks, like just try new stuff, so that's what I just did today. I'm here with Mr. Olamiji. So what is your overall perspective of kids and kayaks? Um, kids and Kayaks is one of the most special programs I've had the opportunity to involve children in. We're talking about perseverance, we're talking about overcoming fear, we're talking about meeting obstacles and challenges, and not only meeting those obstacles and challenges, but exceeding them. Nice. At the end of the day, what do you think that these kids should take home and keep with them? Absolutely. You know, trees are great uh, for the environment. The act of planting a tree in a community really is a special and powerful um, you know, event and time because we're, we're inviting in a living life form that we will uh, remain living with for years to come. It's too low what impose that go in it and you got hit it down so it can make sure the street is correct. And then it's like, it's like zip tie, but it's not so it can keep the street up and down with the poles. Talk about food, talk about water sources, things make fire. Those are all super important, great things that you need. Um, when you're in the outdoor. I'm here with August. So August, what did you put on your list? Um, we have put batteries, flashlights, food, water, sunscreen, bug repellent, backpack, lighter, blanket, tent, map, life jacket, clothes, and toilet paper. Oh, jump in! Jump out! Oh. Jump in! Jump out! Jump right! Jump left! This tree is a gift to the earth. Oh, yes. 
I promise to care for it and make sure that it survives. I promise to care for it and make sure it survives. And also, the real thing, the thing I appreciate about the program is that we take our children and give them a chance to see a different side of Baltimore City. Being that we're here at the park, they get to see a view of the city, they get to be out on the water. And if you look at their faces when they come off the water, they all feel a great sense of self-accomplishment. And for me, that is what I always hold in my heart, and that's why we keep coming down here to take part in this experience. I had such a nice experience today with my old school and joining the Kids of Kayaks program. I know I had learned a lot, and it's nice to see a new group do the same. This has been the Nature Can Law reported for the City School Student Media Team. Peace. Kayaks really give kids a better look at the environment and help them experience new things. Can you imagine being in a kayak? That's a lot of water. We have to take a short break. We'll be right back after this. I just really just wanted to take care of my family a lot. I knew that like I could be the one to sort of make my family proud, make the city proud. And so when I'm like studying late at night, I just remember that my family is like dependent on me. And so it means a lot to me that if, if I can just make that dream come true. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Career and college readiness, the college application as told by students. Transcript, SAT scores, essays, recommendations, um, social security number, uh, personal information, personal statements, and stuff like that. Letter of recommendation approves you, it shows your figure and what you want to be, and how teachers looked at you in your past, and from now, and how they see you overcome your fears and be a bigger and better person and to also be a leader and look into your future and you see actually what you've become and how those teachers help you become what you are. So like you would get from teachers that like that know you well or like you um you had a high grade in that class or you did well. Like well you know like well they know you they know what your your hard points are and your good points are and they can give it to a college so they know who you are and how 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 well you work. Your transcript because the transcript just shows your your knowledge of what you know so far, and I think it's important for colleges to know what you know. Um, my essay, because people get to see me through it, and I love to write about like what I've been through and how I've gotten to where I am, because people don't always know. They see you as grades on a paper, and they see you as what pe other people say about you, but no one knows the real story but you. I would see your SAT scores already count because it helped colleges then put you in like classes that you actually didn't need and how you can go from there to become who you really want to be. When you apply to a college, they want to know you're on a personal level. So thousands upon thousands of kids are applying to this one college that you are too. So they want to get to know you on a personal level, but they also want to know what other people think of you. So in order to do that, the best way for them to find that out is by getting a recommendation from someone that is a uh, parameter on that knows you on a personal level. Visit BaltimoreCitySchools.org slash college for all your college and career readiness needs. College life so far, how you expect it? I mean, it's not the glamour that you see on television and everything. I mean, it's a lot of work, especially transitioning from being a high school student to a college student because you have like a lot of free time so you have to learn how to balance that like who your professor is and how to study how to make sure you're on your best for each and every class so it's like really having to have self-control over yourself to say I want to do my best. Welcome back for our next two stories we're going to kick it with Digital Harbor boys soccer team and then check out the Patterson girls volleyball team. Both sports show a lot of unity and diversity. The athletes learn so much from each other, not just on the field, but also about their cultures. That's awesome. Getting to know different languages. Now let's take a look at Patterson. Getting them to understand the connection between like, in soccer you have to practice to be good, and you have to dig through tough times, injuries, pain, 
bad losses, anything, right? Because you're not going to win every game every year. And getting them to apply that to the classroom is a challenge, but it's something I've seen some kids succeed with. It gave me responsibility as though where I'm, I have to be responsible with everything I do. So academics-wise, I have to get good grades in order to play for the team and at home, I'm just being responsible with like with my clothes and dirty laundry and just cleaning up and stuff. So it impacted me a lot. Use the whole field. There we go. You know, I feel like people who wouldn't really talk to each other in school maybe, if they play together they have a common sense and they have a common goal and they get to know each other in a completely different way. We do a break at the end of every practice where we put our hands in and we like and we say like uh, family, because our, our big thing is family. I try to make them realize we're a family, like I love y'all, love each other, we gotta be together no matter what happens, win or lose. I mean, I'm from a different country myself, so it's very interesting, you know. I'm being in a foreign country and I have so many people who are actually not from this country, so the diversity is just immense. Me, I'm originally from Africa, so I actually got to meet uh, with another person from the actual country and we speak the same language so it was really great as though like we have the same culture and we have other Hispanics and, uh, and other uh, people from Africa and people from um, Pakistan it's just great and I'm able like to learn languages from their countries <laughs> We had to tell the girls, like, you're playing really well. You're doing everything that you're supposed to do, but we're not getting the result that you want. And that does happen in life sometimes, too. I don't work on volleyball like the escape, like me being sad or like people like making me mad and everything. I don't like playing this volleyball. It helped me escape like the real world. And I go to like my own fantasy. Like, if I had a long day of school for real and like I wasn't feeling a day and I had like some stress, it helped me release stress. A good person to talk to. He gave us the best advice. Like when I say the best, I mean the best. He helped people in any way he could. Like he tried his hardest to help anybody. He'll go the war for any of his volleyball players or for anybody. He helped me out a lot because at first he was my math teacher. So like, like in and out of class, like he let me know like my grades gotta be good. He helped me inside class and reminded me like. If you want to go to college and be a sports player, your grades got to be good inside class and you got to be good on the court team. I think that it's not just volleyball. I think that any sport that any student participates in after school and gets some more adults keeping an eye on them, caring about them, being concerned about them, I think no matter what it is, they're going to behave better. Because now they, they have another person, another mechanism, somebody else to speak to besides a parent, you know what I mean? So. It, it, it helped. We like all oh, a family for real, so it's like fun playing with people that I know and I enjoy playing with. The girls use volleyball as an escape, not only to get away from negative vibes, but also to connect with other girls like a family. Okay, so now it's time for the question of the show. We want to check out Kids and Kayaks. What is the name of the organization that ran this event? Was it called A. Outward Bound, B. Baltimore Kayaking Club, C. Baltimore City Recreation and Parks, or D. Tree Baltimore? Everyone, guess what? We'll give you the answer when we get back. Stay tuned. I am a Baltimore City Public School student. I'm a lot of Baltimore City Public School. Mani Dukti Baltimore City B. Sally, je suis une élève de Baltimore City Public School. So I'm a student of Baltimore City Public Schools. I'm a student of Madaris Baltimore and Hukumia. We are Baltimore City Public School students. And we celebrate diversity every day. Hi students and families. You can get to thousands of free online books in three easy steps. First, log on to www.kidsa-z.com or download the Kids A through Z app. Next, enter the teacher username. You should have received this already from your teacher. If you haven't, ask for it at school tomorrow. And finally, click on Reading Room and pick a book. If you need any help, please ask your child's teacher. 
is underway on modernizing school buildings like here at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. The type of school buildings we deserve. Our new schools will provide community-friendly spaces and be better for our environment. They will allow for innovative technology and 21st century teaching and learning. The 21st Century School Buildings Program is positively affecting my education and my city. That's right. Learn more about this major commitment from the state, city of Baltimore, and city schools by visiting Baltimore21stCenturySchools.org. Building a brighter future together. Welcome back. So now it's time to answer the question of the show. Earlier, we went to check out Kids and Kayaks. What is the name of the organization that ran this event? Was it called A, Outward Bound, B, Baltimore Kayaking Club, C, Baltimore Recreation and Parks, or D, Baltimore Tree? The correct answer is C, Baltimore City Recreation and Parks. They have certainly helped the students at Mount Royal Elementary Middle School face their fear. Great job. In our final segment of the show, let's take a look at Bryce and Joelle at the Good Food Summit, where the pizza is getting healthy treatment. Take it away, guys. Hey, everyone. This is Bryce Taylor. And I'm Joelle Black, here today at the Good Food Summit at the Great Kids Farm. This year is Pizza Palooza, and it features, you guessed it, pizza, America's favorite food. That's right, Bryce. But today, kids will see what it's like to eat pizza with vegetables. Let's, let's go. go. I'm in the Pesto Pizza Workshop, where children are not only tasting pesto pizza, but also creating it. At first I thought it looked um, nasty because of, just because I saw it, mm -hmm. but when I tasted it, it was good. I didn't know all the vegetables could take so good. <laughs> well, I'm going to try this pizza that everybody said is pretty good, so let's, let's, get, let's do it. But I do taste the, uh, the pesto. It's there. It's a lot of it is there. The tomatoes are pretty good, too. Fresh vegetables on there to have different perspectives compared to the typical cheese and pepperoni. Good pizza and it tastes like more vegetables on it. We were trying to get them to see that there's other sauces and other possibilities that you can put as the base for a pizza. So we picked um, the basil, the kale, spinach, peppers, and tomatoes. They all came from right outside and some we picked about an hour ago and some we picked yesterday afternoon. One of the crops that we grow at the Great Kids Farm, and it's called rhubarb. One, two, three. It's good, right? It's green. Isn't that delicious? Yeah. You're good. How about for trying your vegetables? Now we're about to go into the pepper room where these kids are making dessert pizzas with fig jam and apple crumble. Let's check it out. You made it yourself? Uh-huh. No, you didn't. I'll put this right here and everybody else. Now, I'm at the Pizza Friday workshop where kids are working with pizza stats. Dang it. No, no, no. Yes. Wait. Amount of money spent on cheese by pizzeria. Everybody's going to get, for the most part, get that pizza on Friday. So I was very impressed with the amount of uh, pounds, the amount of money, and just how much it takes to make just simple pizza. I thought it was less, but it was definitely more. Oh my gosh, Bryce, the kids actually ate pizza with vegetables on it. This is gonna change pizza forever. Okay, Joe, let's keep it together. But I must say, it was good to see the kids learning about the farm and how cheese was made. And even the fig apple pizza had my mouth watering. Agreed. This has been Joel Black. And I'm Bryce Taylor for the City School Student Media Team. Bye. It's cool seeing the kids try pizza with vegetables on it. So brave. <laughs> Yum. That looks good on pizza. Maybe next time I'll try veggies. So that's it for this episode of Great Kids Up Close. Thank you for joining us and sharing the wonderful stories of our students. Be sure to watch Education Channel 77 for more. Head to vimeo.com slash city schools. Or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are everywhere. And if your school would like us to cover a story, email communications at bcps.k12 md.us. I'm Danaja and I'm Sean Ye. See you next time on Great Kids Up Close.
拜。Bye